Live from Berlin, Germany, it's theCUBE. Covering NetApp Insight 2017. Brought to you by NetApp. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of NetApp Insight 2017. We're here in Berlin, Germany. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Peter Burris. We have two guests on the program now. We have Rory McBride, who is the Technical Account Manager at Aero, and Brian McCloskey, who is the Vice President Worldwide for Hyperconverged Infrastructure at NetApp. Brian, Rory, thanks so much for coming on the show. Oh, thanks. So Thank I want to start with you, Brian, and just talk a little bit, tell our viewers a little bit about the value that HCI delivers to customers, in, and especially in terms of simplifying the data center. Okay, what, uh, in a nutshell, what NetApp HCI does is it, it takes what would normally be hours and hours and hours to implement a solution, and literally hundreds of inputs, uh, generally over 400 inputs, and it simplifies it down to under 30 inputs, and an installation that'll be done within 45 minutes. Now, traditional HCI solutions uh, had, have similar uh, implementation characteristics, but you lose some of the enterprise flexibility and scale that customers of NetApp have come to expect over the years. And what we've done is we've provided that simplicity while allowing customers to uh, have the enterprise capabilities and flexibility that they've, they've grown accustomed to. And is this something that you were talking with customers? I mean, this, in terms of the simplicity, what, what were you hearing from customers? Well, most customers these days are challenged of, everybody has to find a way to do more with less, or to do a, minimally a lot more with the same. And if you think of uh, NetApp, we've always been wonderful about giving customers a, a, a great production experience. So when you buy an, a typical NetApp product, you're probably going to own it for three, four, or five years, and it will continue. And NetApp's always been great for that three, four, and five year time frame. And what we've done with HCI is we've really simplified the beginning part of that curve, of how do you get it from the time it lands on your dock to implement it and, and usable by your users in a short manner. So that's what HCI's brought to the NetApp portfolio. It, that's incremental to what was there before. And so one of the advantages to uh, third parties that work closely with NetApp is that by having a simpler approach to doing things, you can do more of them. But on the other hand, you want to ensure that you're also, you remain focused on the value add. So in the field, when actually sitting down with a customer and working with them to ensure that they get the value that they want of these products, how do you affect that balance as the product becomes simpler to the customer now being able to focus more on other things other than configuration and implementation? I think by being able to get to, to doing something with your data is, is the key. Um, you need a, a low bar of entry, which a lot of the software and hardware providers are trying to do today. And I think um, HCI just helps to pull all of that together, which is great. Um, we're hearing from you know, those third party vendors that it's, it's great that from day one, they've been integrated um, into, into the overall portfolio message. And I think customers are just going to be pretty excited at what they can do from day zero with this hardware. But when you think about ultimately their, how they're going to spend their time, what are they going to be doing instead of now all this all configuration work? Especially, what is Arrow going to be doing now that you're not doing that <laughs> value added configuration work? Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll, um, we'll be helping to, to realize the full potential of what they bought, so rather than spending uh, a lot of time trying to make the hardware work, they're concentrating more on delivering a service or an application back to the business that's actually going to generate some sort of revenue. Um, you know, in, in Arrow, we're talking a lot to people about um, IOT, and I think you know, it's going to be the next wave of information that people are going to have to deal with. And having a stable product uh, that can support and provide some sort of value of information back to the business is going to be key. So Brian, HCI, as you noted, dramatically reduces the time to get to value. Mm -hmm. Not only now, but it also sustains that level of simplicity over the life of the utilization mm -hmm. of the product. But how does it fit into the rest of the NetApp product set, the rest of the NetApp portfolio? What does it make better? 
what makes it better in addition to just the HCI product. Okay, so NetApp has a uh, really robust portfolio of offerings that we, at a high level, categorize into our next generation offerings, which are solid fire, FlexPod solid fire, storage grid, and hyper-converged, and then the traditional NetApp on tap based offerings. And what the glue between the whole portfolio is the data fabric and HCI is very tightly integrated into the data fabric. One of the innovations we are delivering is snap mirror integration of our HCI platform uh, in, into the traditional ONTAP family of products. So you can seamlessly move data from our hyper-converged system to a traditional ONTAP-based system, and it also gives you really seamless mobility to either your own private cloud or to public cloud uh, platforms. And as a company with a wide portfolio, it gives us the ability to be really consultative with our partners and our customers, because you know, what we want is, and we feel customers are best served on NetApp, and we want them to use NetApp, and if uh, a, an ONTAP-based system is a better solution for them than Hyperconverge, then that's absolutely what we will recommend for them. Uh, and to your earlier question about the partners, uh, one of the interesting things with HCI is it's it's the first time as NetApp we're delivering an integrated system with compute and with a hypervisor. It comes pre-configured with VMware. Uh, and it's a wonderful opportunity for our partners to add incremental value through the sales cycle to what they've generally brought to NetApp in the past. Because as NetApp, we're really storage experts where our partners have a much wider uh, and deeper understanding of the whole ecosystem than we do. So it's, it's been uh, uh, interesting for us to, to have discussions with partners because we're learning a lot because we're now involved in layers and more deeply involved at higher levels of the stack than we have been. I'm really interested in that because you say that you have this kind of consultative uh, relationship with these customers. How are you able to, to learn from them, their best practices, and then do you then transfer what you've learned to other partners and other customers? Yeah, um, from the customer end, we try and disseminate the learnings as much as we can, but we're a, a huge, huge organization with many, many account teams. Uh, but it, it all starts with what the customer wants to accomplish. I mean, minimally, they need a solution that's going to plug in and do what they expect it to do today. And, uh, but what's the more important part is where, what their vision is for where they want to be three years down the road, five years down the road, 10 years down the road. And it's really that vision piece that tends to, to drive more towards one part of the portfolio uh, than the other. But take us through that, how this works. So you walk into an account, presumably Aero ECS has a customer. Yep. Uh, the Aero ECS customer says, well, we have an issue that's going to require some specialized capabilities in how we use our data. So you could look at a lot of different options, but you immediately think NetApp. What is it that leads you to NetApp HCI versus ONTAP versus SolidFire? Is there a media characteristic that you say, that's HCI. I would say that the, the driving factor was the fact that they, they wanted something that's simple and easy to manage. They, they want to get, I don't know, say a Mongo database up and running, or you know, they've, they've got some other application that, that really depends on their business, and the underlying hardware needs to function. Um, you know, Brian was saying there that uh, it's got Element OS sitting underneath it, which is in its 10th iteration, and you've got you know, VMware, you know, version six, which is, you know, probably the most adopted uh, virtualization platform out there. You know, these are two best of breed partnerships coming together, um, and people are happy with that uh, and can move on and, and manage it from a single pane of glass moving forward from day one right the way through to when they need to transition to a, a new platform, which is you know seamless for them. And I think that's that's great from any application point of view because you don't want to worry about the health of things or whatever. You want to be able to give an application back to the business. Uh, and also, we talked about education. I mean, this event is, is geared towards bringing customers together with NetApp and understanding the messaging around HCI, which is great. 
one of the things you, you, that you keep hearing from customers is this need for data simplicity, this need for, for, for huge time-saving yeah. products and services. What do you think, if you can think three to five years down the road, what will the next generation of concerns be and how are you, I'm going to use the word that we're hearing a lot, future-proof, yeah. uh, what you're doing now to serve those customer needs of the future? Uh, three to five years down the road. Uh, <laughs> well, I think the, to the future, I can't predict three to five years out uh, ter very reliably, but uh, the but data- you can predict they're going to have more data. Yes. <laughs> they're, going to, they're, they're, going to, they're going to merge it in new and yeah. unseen ways, yep. and they need to do it more cheaply. Yep. But the future proofing really comes in from, from the data fabric. So, like you can, with the integration into the data fabric, you could have, you could have a information that started on a NetApp system that was announced eight years ago, seamlessly moves into a solid fire all flash array, which seamlessly moves to a hyper-converged system, which seamlessly moves to your private cloud, which eventually moves off to a public cloud, and you can bring it back into any tiers. And wherever you want that data in six, seven, eight years, you know the data fabric will extend to it. Uh, so that's really where, where the, and there are, within each individual product, there are investment protection technologies within each one, but it's the data fabric that really should make customers feel comfortable that no matter where they're going to end up, taking their first step with NetApp is a step in the right direction. Right. So the value added ecosystem that NetApp and others use, and obviously Arrow ECS is a big player in that, has historically been tied back into hardware assets. How does it feel to be moving more into worrying about your customers' data assets? I think it's an exciting time to be, to be bringing those things together. I mean, at the end of the day, it's what the customer wants. They, they want a solution that integrates seamlessly from, you know, whether that be the rack right the way up to the application. They want something that they can get on their phone they want something they can get on their tablet, they want the same experience regardless of whether they're in an airplane or right next to a data center. And I think the demand on data is, is huge and will only get bigger over the next um, five years. Um, I was looking at a, a recent cover of I think Forbes magazine which was said uh, about, um, oh, it was actually from a number of years ago about Nokia and how can anybody ever catch them and where are they now? So, I think you need to be able to spot the changes and adapt quickly and to steal uh, one of the comments from the keynote yesterday, it's moving from a survivor to a thriver with your data. Mm -hmm. It's going to be key to those, those companies. Well, just in talking about the demands on data growing, but it, it's also true that the demands on data professionals are growing too. Yeah. How is that changing the way you recruit and retain top talent? Well, for us as NetApp, uh, we're, if you were to look at sort of what we wanted in a CV five years ago, you know, we wanted people that understood storage, we wanted people that knew about volumes, that knew about data layouts, that knew how to maximize performance by physical placement of data. And now what we're looking for is people that really understand the whole stack and that can talk to customers about their application needs, their business problems, can talk to developers. Because what we've done is we've taken like even those people that were good at all those other things I mentioned, when you ask them like, what do you love about this product? Like none of them ever came back and said, I love the first week I spent installing it. Um, like that was <laughs> just, so we've taken that away and we let them do more interesting work. Um, and you know, our challenge for, for us is, and I think us as a collective society is to make sure we bring people forward and enable from an education perspective, skills enablement, so they're capable of, of rising to that next level of demand. But we're taking a lot of the busy work out. Right, and then making sure that they have the skills to be able to mm -hmm. take what they're seeing in the data and then and then yep. make take action. Yeah, but we we you know we want our customers to look at NetApp as a data expert that can work with them on their business problem, not a storage expert that can explain how an array works. Well, Brian Rury, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a great conversation. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. You are watching theCUBE. We will have more from NetApp Insight. I'm Rebecca Knight for Peter Burris in just a little bit. Ah.